the next part of 3.2 is really just one problem that I want to cover. Um, we're going to talk about one concept, talking about the powers of i, so right, taking the square root of negative 1 and raising it to a various power. We're going to do that by investigation. I want to focus on something that is much more complicated, and I really want to make sure I walk this through. I want to talk about evaluating something that looks like this. The square root of 7 minus 24i. And your first thought was probably like mine, which is, I don't think it's possible. Well, it is. Um, so we want to keep in mind that all of our complex numbers are written in this form, right? And the major catch here is that my coefficients, my real and imaginary parts, need to be real numbers. And this is a key, right? I can't put imaginary numbers within imaginary numbers because then I could just simplify them. So we know, or we suppose, that this whole mess here is actually going to be equal to some complex number, right? By simplifying this, I should get to 7 minus 24i. Well, what this is saying is kind of in the same vein as this whole, well, i squared equals negative 1, so i equals the square root of negative 1. This is saying that some number squared is going to be equal to 7 minus 24i. And this is a really imper important first step. This is a really important first step because it lets us see the problem in a way that we can actually maybe work with. Well, our next step is to take this even farther and say, well, if z is a plus bi, as we know, Right, if z is a plus bi, as we know, then I can rewrite z as a plus bi squared equal to 7 minus 24i. And this is going to make it even easier to work with once I FOIL this out. So we'll just apply our properties here of squaring a binomial. Um, normally this would be b squared i squared, but we know that i squared is negative 1, so I can change this to minus b squared equals 7 minus 24i. And we've got a rule, which is when two polynomials, or in this case two complex numbers, are equal to each other, I can equate constants and variables. In this case, I can equate real parts and variable part, and uh, imaginary parts. So we're going to equate real and imaginary <clears throat> parts. And this is going to give us dun, 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 a system of equations. So a squared minus b squared. So isolate all my parts that don't have an i equal to 7. And well, if 2abi is equal to negative 24i, then I don't really need the i's at all. Then 2ab must be equal to negative 24. Um, and if I want to go even farther, when we begin to simplify this, make this a little bit easier, to say a squared minus b squared equals 7, and that ab equals negative 12. And now I have a system I can solve, just like we would normally. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is make a substitution. So maybe I'll substitute for b. I'll say b is equal to negative 12 divided by a. And this gives me a substitution that I can put right into my other equation. So I'm going to say that a squared minus negative 12 over a squared is equal to 7. So simplifying a little bit again, right? This is going to give me 144 over a squared. So let's condense this into one expression, and we'll multiply everything by a squared. 44 equals 7a squared. And now we need to solve this. So. If you're stuck at this point, take a minute, back up, and make sure you're on the same page. I don't want you to go ahead without really knowing where we've come from. 
So to move on, I want to solve this. So I'm going to set everything on one side in order to set this equal to zero. And now I have, believe it or not, this is a quadratic. It's just a little bit scary looking. Um, we're going to do something that's going to make this hopefully a little bit more palatable. And that's purely for aesthetic reasons. Let's let x be equal to a squared. And I'll show you why I'm doing this. Yeah, I could try to factor this and look at it as quadratic, but it's really intimidating when you see an a to the fourth. Well, by changing up, effectively, essentially changing the language that I'm talking about this function in, or this equation in, I'm able to look at this as something that's a little more normal to us. And I've really changed nothing about the equation. I'm just changing it visually for myself to make the problem a little bit easier, a little bit more accessible, um, to make it something that I can conquer more easily, more successfully. So purely for aesthetic reasons, and purely maybe to make this nicer, I've done this substitution step. And now I'm just going to factor. So I'm looking for factors of 144 that add up to negative 7. I will save you the headache. I'm just going to tell you that it is plus 9 and minus 16. Um, well, this tells me that if I were to solve for this, x is ne uh, negative 9 <clears throat> and x whoops, is 16. Well, I didn't start with x, I started with a. So if I'm going to make this substitution step, I need to do the reverse, right? I need to undo the substitution. So, whoops, those should be x's. I need to undo the substitution so that I can actually end up with the variable I need to be left with. So, this is really a squared equals negative 9 and a squared equals 16. So, this would give me plus or minus 3i and plus or minus 4. Well, we said at the beginning that a and b need to be real numbers. So I can reject, and I need to reject, 3i as a valid solution. Great, so I've got two values for a here. How do I find b? I just plug in and solve. If a is equal to 4, then let's use my negative 12 over a, just like solving a system of equations. Over 4, which is going to be negative 3. And if a is negative 4, b is negative 12 over negative 4, I get positive 3. And so my two complex numbers that are solutions are 4 minus 3i and negative 4 plus 3i. So again, this might be a time that you want to stop, go back, make sure this actually works out. Uh, make sure you follow all my steps, make sure you are on the same page. And then we've done it. We've got our answer. Um, I should be able to foil these out or sorry, square these, and prove that it works out. So you don't need to do a check in your work, but in case you are curious um, and want to check it, I should be able to show that this number squared is going to give me 7 minus 24i. So 4 minus 3i squared should give me, is it equal to 7 minus 24i? Let's find out. So 16. So square the first term, twice the product, square the last term, i squared is negative 1, so this is 16 minus 9, which is 7, 7 minus 24i, which means if I were to take the square root on both sides, 4 minus 3i is equal to the square root of 7 minus 24i. It works the same way with my second solution. If I want to show that this one works out. 
and you might be able to see it coming already just because of all the squaring that's about to happen. Same thing, square the first term, twice the product, square the last term, i squared is negative 1, 16 minus 9 is 7, Oops, this should be squared, which means that my number squared gives me 7 minus 24i, and just to really prove it all the way, I'm going to take the square root just to show it. Again, you don't need to do the check, but sometimes I like to show it just to show you that I'm not pulling this out of thin air, and the notation does mean the same thing, right? I'm still trying to find some number squared, right? Some number squared that gives me this complex number. They start by giving it to you in maybe a less um, accessible or palatable way, but we know that we're able to write it into something that um, we can work a little bit better with. So don't panic when you see a problem like this. Think logically, think critically um, by writing it in another form.